Hey, hey, take off, eh? Dude, Moosehead, no. No, I, listen. Listen, buddy. Okay, listen. No. no. Uh, did I buy I this pack because... of darts for you? No, I bought it myself. Oh. You were late with okay, the so beer. so you smoked the pack I just bought you already, because eh? you were born 10 minutes earlier, you think you're in charge. Oh. Well, listen, he's not like, wrong, eh? I no. was born 10 minutes earlier, yeah, so that does make me in charge. Moosehead okay? brothers, they always think they can do whatever oh, they Jesus, want to all right, okay. brothers. Listen, like, <laughs> just... You were nice. beer, eh? Okay, let's, let's go, go get, get a, a beer. beer eh? Yeah, okay, we're bye. gonna go have a beer. This video is made possible by EDHREC.com, your stop for recommendations and strategic content for Magic the Gathering's Commander format. So you have been planning this event. You said your your brainchild, your baby, for like the last year or so. Yeah. I remember talking to you about ideas for the next one literally within a week after Commander Sealed. Has it just been putting pieces in motion since then? It's it, So it began with uh, testing and trying to figure out like what works and trying to end the game, which is where the festival came from. Um, so that 75, at 75 minutes, we put you into a dungeon. It's a custom one. First room is you lose half your life, round it up. The last room is you have an omniscience token, your creatures have haste, and you lose the game on your end step. This is specifically to make sure that rounds fall within the 75 minute time, correct? Or the, not the 90 minute time limit, basically. Right, okay, that's yeah. right. 90 makes a little more sense. Yeah. And all of the other things that you've got here, as I go through the hallway, I'll show people all the other stuff that we have set up. Um, all, did all that get put into place like way early on? Uh, kind of, yeah. I mean, like we started thinking about side events and we started thinking about like vendors and that kind of thing early on. And we wanted to make sure that we were able to fill the space with wonderful things that you don't normally see at a, at a command fest. I mean, like you're going to see it when you walk out there. There's a tattoo artist and I'm getting a tattoo on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. So far, it seems incredible. The layout yep. of it, the layout of last year was incredible. I loved it. The layout this year, also really cool. It's interesting to see that there's two different rooms. That's correct. So tomorrow, uh, the Henrietta Ballroom and the Iroquois Ballroom are going to be separated into the two separate uh, charity brackets. And at the end of that, they're going to all end up in here, basically, in the stream room. And we're going to show you guys one of the finals live on stream. And one of the finals will be here for everybody else. And then on Sunday... We're gonna take the winner from one, we're gonna take the winner from the other, and they're gonna pick a partner. And they're gonna play two-headed giant commander. I love that. And it's gonna be insane. It's more than just jamming games, which I think is a really special thing about this event. Yeah, exactly. We wanna make sure that we're doing a lot of things for the community and that the community is represented. So we, I wanna make sure, personally speaking, that everyone has a safe space to be able to be who they are and to be, and to be uh, you know, exactly the uh, thing that they wanna be wherever they wanna be it. So you, I don't think you could find a safer place to play Magic these days. So we're here with not uh, none other than your your, you guys, or this, there's the camera, your, your commander mechanic. What are you most excited about being here at this event? So the main event, the actual sealed commander event is my absolute favorite thing. So this is the second year that I'm doing this now. Last year was my first year and I had such a blast. Kraken packs and making a commander deck out of a limited pool is just such a fantastic brewing experience. Pulling, pulling from like chaff and junk and trying to put something together and then seeing how well it actually works is just so satisfying. Well, that's something that as a brewer, I, I mean, I can see it as well. Like we all look for stipulations and limitations and challenges in brewing. because it's creativity. Because yes, it's easy to create your deck and put in all the staples. And that's something that everybody's always trying to talk down. It's something that everybody's always trying to move away from. But this limited pool really does create that exact, you have to work within your environment. It's something that I love about it is the trading period as well is one of the funniest things that I've ever seen. Yeah, and if you've ever done a sealed pool pre-release and trying to build a deck out of a sealed pool, this goes a step further and you start trading with people and you start saying, you know, like, I really need a commander in these colors and I didn't open one, so I'm going to go find somebody that didn't, isn't using it, and try and get that. Like, just that little bit of, like, if I've got to beg, borrow, and steal for 
three, four, five cards, you're going to do exactly that. And it's so rewarding, so satisfying. I love the frantic nature of it. And you just end up with something that's some kind of abomination at the yep. end of it. And it's so fun. You got any cool new stuff for us? These are tags that you can use to add a little bit more information. You can use them as vertical tokens. You could use them as roll tokens. Roll tokens for the new the Eldraine stuff, correct? Yep. Awesome. That's super cool. What else, what you, what else are you going to say? Testing out audience for dry erase um, deck box labels. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. And so that's a sticker with a dry erase thing? Yep. It's a sticker that you can use. You can use wet erase marker or you can use Sharpie and then um, go over it with dry erase marker. To I'm definitely going to snag a bunch of those for sure. If you've got them here, I'm going to go home with some. Like, <laughs> absolutely. Megan from Infinite Tokens, folks, please, if you need some of the dopest tokens ever, this is who to hit up. Will we see you at any other events coming up? I'll be at Vegas. All right. And should be at the summit. Might have a booth at the summit. Still working out the logistics. Oh, excellent. Well, I look forward to seeing you. Thank you again, Megan. Take care. I get to spin the chaos wheel. This is like so massive right now. No? All right. So we'll try it again. We got we to rip it. Okay. Oh, there you go. Okay. Uno reverse. Uh oh. So. So the I <laughs> does that reverse the turn order? Yeah, yeah, correct. Reverses the turn order. <laughs> oh no! So we hit it to reverse this game, so we were already going in opposite direction. So now it's going back the normal way. It's exciting because it's her turn next. Then instead of mine. Wow, that, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it just got just skipped your turn, brutal, <laughs> Mister. Uh, we've got Mister Big Ben. So quick question for Mister Bevers: favorite candy bar? Mr. Big Benz is sitting right over there. Oh, okay. Good. Well, we need to know. What's your favorite candy bar? <laughs> My favorite candy bar. Mine? Yeah, apparently. Wonder Bar. Wonder Bar. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for answering. You know what? A Wonder Bar is a Canadian candy bar, so maybe they don't even know what it is. I, I don't know what it is. I have you've, in my car. you've probably given me some at some one? point. I have them in my car. We'll go out to the car later. Okay. Right. <laughs> What's your name, boss? Kevin. Kevin, how are we doing? We're doing all right. Have you played in Commander Sealed events in the past? I have not. You have not. Okay. So. Based on what you expect to be doing. Sorry, we'll let you take your turn. Oh, don't you don't no. think I can do both at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, that, was, that was incredibly well done. I wish I, you just did that like it was nothing. Um, do you have any, have you internalized any strategies going into tomorrow's event? Yes, I'm going to pick the art that I think is good and play those cards. <laughs> What's your name, boss? Tim. Tim, how are we doing? I'm good. Where's your head at with tomorrow's event? What are you thinking? I'm going to just get something that's, whatever sparks my fancy that's cool, Okay. And I'm just going to go for it. Because last year, I ended up with uh, Joda. Oh, wow. Which Not Joda? The new Joda. The, the, All right. The 3C5C one. And I just made a pile of shit. <laughs> and it was just like, these are the cards. I'm not making decisions. I'm going to just take anything that's good. And then that's it. I love it. And I mean, like, it's a good event. Because, like, last year, we were helping a kid's sleeve past build time to make it to the game. Awesome. It's just, yeah, it's, just, it, and it has that yeah. atmosphere. You know, yeah. that's what's so beautiful about this event. My brother in Checker is here. Uh, we've got none other than John Useless Knowledge. It is an absolute pleasure to get your face on this camera. How are you today? I'm great. I'm doing awesome. What are you snacking on? What are we working gummy with? Gummy bears. You want some? Just gummy bears? Yeah. Do we get an orange one? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Can we, do I get to pick and choose? Oh, oh, there we go. Oh, we got oh, orange right oh. off the jump. It's a little ghost chewing on chewing on gummy bears while we're live here, but that's okay. We're fine. So I've been asking people, do you have any strategies going into tomorrow's event? Um, strategies from that I picked up from the last one because last year was last year was awesome. Board wipes are clutch. If you see them, grab them. All right. Um, in regards to when you're setting up and you're ripping your packs open, le any legendary stuff put to the side, any hard uh, any mana rocks put in the middle. Um, those are things that you're probably going to be able to throw into whatever you want. So, like, have those aside so you at least know where you're at in regards to that stuff. And other than that, just try to grab good stuff. Th th those are that's good. So you're going at it from a big tent. So like you're as you're opening the packs, think about your deck construction. Think about this is what I'm going to need. This is what's going to need to go in. Any of the staples that could potentially go in whatever you're doing, i.e., mana rocks, because they're whole, usually colorless. Stuff like that. Just put it aside. And mana rocks, card draw removal. Like these are things that need to go in. Yep. And I like that board wipe because they aren't super common, but they are really, really important, aren't Especially they? Especially when they're one-sided. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> we got Al here. Al, this is, uh, it's been, it's been a long year. It has, certainly. I, I remember 
pulling you aside many times last year at Commander Sealed. How are you doing today? Uh, hey, I'm doing great. We're here at Commander Sealed. This venue, so much better than last year. It's a nice venue. It's so cool. I love Very it. Very cool. Are you playing in the main event tomorrow? Absolutely am playing in the main event tomorrow. What are your strategies going into it? Okay, honestly, last time around, uh, I built for the gimmick, absolutely. Uh, I did not trade a lot. I'm going to try and utilize that trading more often and just play to whatever I pull. You're going to go aggressive trading and... Yeah. Uh, okay, so aggressive trading. What do you mean by play to you, play to what you call? So last time, uh, the Commander Sealed uh, social media team had been pushing the fact that you can play whatever you pull. There's no ban list. Yep. So they were uh, like, "Oh, is L gonna build braids because braids isn't banned?" So I built braids. Oh, amazing. <laughs> okay, and di it did not. It didn't work so well, or did it? No, it, it worked pretty well. It just made everyone who played against me hate me. Yep. And okay. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are looking absolutely. Absolutely lush. Thank you, thank you, thank Hello. you. Hello. How are we doing, guys? We're alive, we're breathing, we're thriving, and yeah. we're in our lane. What are you most excited about today? Um, I'm excited to see the build phase, honestly, because I'm really, I really want to hear the table chatter of what people decide is good and what isn't. I am most excited about the lines that people can find inside their sealed packs. Like you open it up, what can you do? How can you get there? Which cards are going to work together? That is what I'm super, super excited about is the creativity, the ingenuity inside the build process. How yeah. are we doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. I just... I'm figuring out where to go. There are so many people here and so much to do. Yeah, it's nice and crowded. There's good people. There's good attitudes. Uh, I got to ask you the same things. What's your strategy today? I'm going to go for three colors, probably. That's my goal. Um, I honestly don't even know what packs we're opening. What? Nice, okay. Uh, I have no strategy. I'm here to just have a great time and hang out. It's a great environment. Lots of wonderful people. Are you going to aggressively trade? Probably. I'm probably going to get hosed. I'll give away some good cards. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, you got you got to be ready to just be like, yep, I will trade this this twenty dollar card for your pile of bulk garbage. Yeah, because I need an ephemerate. Or <laughs> <laughs> yep. how are you feeling this morning? Doing pretty good, doing pretty good. I'm excited. Do you have, mentally, have you prepared for this? Do you have any strategies going into it? Hope that my pool is good. <laughs> All right, that's good, you have hope and a prayer. Yep, I'm just, I'm winging it like I usually do. Like a good red Awesome. Player. Do you feel like you're gonna go into this like aggressively trading? You know about the trade period and yeah. all that. Uh, do you think you're gonna trade really hard? I'm gonna try if I need to. You, so mono red would be ideal? Uh, that or Golgari or, or Jun would be nice. So if you had a dream pull, a dream commander, the absolute nut, what would it be? OG Korvold. OG Korvald. Oh I've my god. List, so. I'm rooting for you. Korvald would be the, that Jun's dream. Yeah. And you know what Korvald says on it? Besides flying, it says card. draw a card. So we, we are after that. I got to ask, what is that shirt from? Uh, I got this uh, custom made. Uh, actually, a guy that I work with, he uh, makes clothing. And uh, yeah, we, me and my buddy over there, uh, over at Table 29, uh, we're wearing, wearing matching shirts. We even got the matching yin yangs. OK. <laughs> so, yeah, we came, we came prepared, but uh, he uh, I, I uh, purchased my first, uh, made my first real investment in my deck in Avacyn. I okay. finally draw, like, took that leap and like really spent some money on my main deck. Yep. And the first thing he went and did is bought Deadly Rollick and used <laughs> it in the very first game. And that's what he said to me. He said, get exiled, idiot. Amazing. That I, I had to put it on a shirt. It's so good. It's so funny, too. So how excited are you about today's game? Uh, pretty excited. I've never done anything quite like this before. Uh, in, I did a Commander Boxing League once at an SCG uh, Command Fest, but this is a different thing. This is like Chaos Sealed plus... I, I understand there's some trading. We're allowed to yes, trade there is. <laughs> there is a 15-minute trade period. I also see this on the table. Uh, this thing is... Oh, nice! Like, uh, I'll just read the top one. Ticket taker. Each player loses half their life rounded up. This looks like a, a map or a labyrinth where crazy stuff happens in every room. So what is this? So this is, I believe this is your end game. So if it goes to time, All right. you get it, you end up in this dungeon. Oh, I love this. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> so, the, the last room of this dungeon, grand finale. Until end of turn, you may cast spells from your hand without paying their mana cost. Creature spells this way, gain haste. At the beginning of your cleanup step, you lose. <laughs> yeah, game's over. If you could rip any commander out of this, what would you be the most excited for? Ooh, uh, yeah, I have not given much thought to my commander, but... I don't know Thassa's oracles in any of these packs, <laughs> but that's what I want. That's fair, okay. I want Thassa's oracle in some way to enable it. Just one and one. I don't need to hold, <laughs> like, six demonic tutors, but, you know, like, 
give me 1,000 Oracle one way to exile my deck. Amazing. I'll figure it out. It's the Dookie Boys Yo. back in action. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, how are you today? Doing good, man. I slept for like three hours. All right, that's all. I had solid. a horrible hotel breakfast. Yeah. Oh, nice. Uh, how's our mentals? How's our Feeling how's good, our game man. state? Feeling pretty good. Mostly, I'm just stoked to crack packs, build a weird ass deck, and go like O2 drop and just play <laughs> other games. What salty cards do you anticipate oh, seeing today? Oh, man. What, can you imagine? What salty commanders could you anticipate seeing? Uh, I think I think there's a possibility that Grand Arbiter Augustine the <laughs> Fourth or the Fifth or whatever it is, is in a pack because I think it was in one of the packs that we're going to get. So it, that would be like the ultimate. Oh, I, my I, God. Can you imagine? I think if I get any stacks pieces, I am required to play them <laughs> because it's, a brand, it's just a branding thing. So I have to. Love Surge, Love Surge. <laughs> How we doing? Good, we're doing great. We uh, we opened Aragorn. Oh, so, wow. so four color good stuff. Four color good stuff. Uh, Star you, of Extinction and you got a lot of multicolor stuff in there. Uh, I had to trade the pod for a lot of the multicolor stuff, but mostly is it. So we're, we're scrying a lot. Not okay. A ton of, not a ton of lightning bolts. There was a Minsk and Boo and my pod wow. right here, Ooh. and uh, Boo got through two board wipes, and oh, turns out he's just chonky and uh, yep. beats Aragorn. <laughs> yes, facts. How we doing? We're doing fan diddly tastic. <laughs> what did you build? I built Joda with Gigantas. Fuck off. You got Joda? Yeah. I'm so jealous. That's like the hit. That's the dream for the sure. Were people really cool about giving you legendaries? Was your was your pod just like trading you whatever they weren't using? Yes. Um actually one of my pod mates gave me the Joda. They're like, I don't want to play this. This is too this is too much. That is the dream. Congratulations. And I see you've got Nomodi there as well. So you are cascading for days. Absolutely. This is fun. This is good. Um, right now, things are a little bit dire. Um, my jet mirror got jacked. Okay, makes like stolen. Yeah, the ancient brass dragon took my jet mirror. Without the jet mirror, though, uh, things would be good. Was it easy to build with Giganta as a companion? Kind of. Um, it really got down to the last uh, moments of, of like deck building for it. And you've got a noble heritage in there. You are crushing it. This deck looks like an absolute joy to play. Oh, it's fun. We're, we just smash. We just smash face. That's all we're doing. It's fun. Oh my God! It's the Hello, Alan. the Dread Warlock Robert live and in person. Hi. <laughs> no Doug's here. No Doug. You. No. you Your camera's him. working. Doug, so Doug's not here. You ditched Doug. Did you leave him at home? Uh, he was sleeping, but I think he got into the wires here because we saw some speaker problems. But you know, patrons, that's what happens. I gotta get the full outfit. Hold on, hold on. We gotta get. We've got the Dread Warlock Robert here in full effect, and look at those boots. My man is fully kidding. Dice, going. dice. Okay, I was gonna ask if it was like fruit roll-ups or maybe like some. Dice. I have yeah, dice. Okay, solid. Dice and things we can't talk about on Twitch. What did you What did you build? I want to know what the Dread Warlock built. Oh, I gotta look at the commander. It's a green background that gives me squirrels. Okay. And the other one, Deepwood Hermit. And the black card that brings things back from the yard. Awesome. Oh. I made a, a graveyard pile, and I like milling in there. I got 15 pieces of removal, which is great. <laughs> uh, and about 10 ramp, and 38 lands, and a bunch of shit creatures. <laughs> with a, uh, 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 what's the zombie that attacks and creates two zombies? Okay, it's awesome. Not a zombie. Uh, I forget what it's called. The Grave Titan? That Grave Titan. <laughs> oh, Grave Titan. I love it. Yeah, so Grave that's the strongest card in my pile. That's amazing. Was your pod cool about trades? Was oh, everybody yeah. trading they and being were really cool? It was like, I'm not using these. Let's go. And, you know, only if it was like a valuable card. Like, I wanted my Mystic Reward. Yeah, that's fair. So, you know, but other than that, it's like, go ahead. We're not using these. Yep. It's very fun. What inspired your your deck. What I so I took a look through it. You're running OG, yeah, and that's the blink blink yeah. monk, right? Yeah, the, the 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 monk that blinks herself. Uh, whenever she enters the battlefield, you scry two, gain two life, and whenever you cast your second spell, you can blink uh, a creature you control. Uh, yeah, she she she's pretty good. I, I just I so 
the way that this event works is kind of different from other limit events. I yeah. think that, uh, I mean, you, you, you've done this last year also. And what we found was that you just don't have enough time to analyze the collective pool of like, what, 14 times four, so like 56 packs worth yep. of cards. So you just find a commander, you're like, all right, I think I can build this, right? Yep. And uh, you, you work with your pod and you figure out like, hey, what's everyone else building? Because I just want the best cards in this pot, in this pod, yep. right? And so, you know, I had someone who was in Mardu, someone was in Naya. Uh, Tyler from Play to Win was in my pod also. Okay. Yeah, he was doing Simic. So I was like, all right, yeah, I'll, I'll do Azorius, right? So that way I still get some good stuff going. And uh, she, she, she happened to be there. Uh, I opened up a Mana Drain. Which I saw that. So I got a chance to look through your deck, and you had a lot of counter magic and a lot of ETBs. It looked like a heavy control package with big synergy with your commander, which is exactly what you want. Yeah. And Flyers, Talrand. I just had a bunch of creatures that just like, oh, yeah, they all fly, and, you know, I'm just going to swing. Yeah. How did your game one go? Uh, well, we played against Scoops. And Scoops decided to be a Chaos Goblin and played Descent into Avernus. <laughs> oh, nice. Love it. Uh, yeah. Uh, it got to, like, eight counters, so we all took eight. <laughs> and, you know, uh, one of our opponents, like, you know, just pulled out uh, the, the horn from... Well, there's a lot of horns in Lord of the Rings, but the one that makes a bunch of 1-1s. Yep. Uh, and, yeah, he had 15 1-1s in play. And we all took eight damage from Descent into Avernus. And he's like, yeah, you know... I'm, I'll play this card that gives them all plus one, plus one. You um, just bonked everyone? Yeah, just bonked everyone. Amazing. Yeah. It's, I love that this format is, like, so... Like, the spikiness is there. Like, the, the explosive plays happen, but they're, they're more random than you see normally. Very chaotic. People are playing with what they have. Yep. Uh, and but the synergies are there. Yeah. It, it, it is very, very interesting. I think that the biggest linchpin and a takeaway for this event and future events is that the commander packs are everything here. Like, yes. There's so many commanders from Commander Legends Baldur's Gate. Last year, it was from just, I think, Commander Legends with uh, the partner commanders. And yep. Stuff. Uh, there, they, there's so many decks where those are the commanders of the decks because, you know, it's very much built for commander and yep. uh, it's very consistent with that. Um, whereas if you get like, I don't know, Dominar United, you have a lot of multicolored cards yep. and you have to figure out what to work with that. And some of the other cards are very like specific to a certain type of uh, synergy. Like uh, I had the... What you call the the, the black white hero of blade hold? That, yep. With like that that made the little uh, infect or toxic creatures, right? But you don't have enough infect or toxic synergies, et cetera, et cetera. This is kind of in a, in no small part your baby, you would say. C Commander Sealed is my brainchild. Yeah. So this is year number. Is it four? Number four. How are we feeling about it? We're feeling really good. We had a great turnout. Um, we're raising a lot of money for charity. Yep. In part, thanks to this guy. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, and I think everybody's having a great time. We went to three days, and I don't think we would change that. Uh, that, that was going to be my next question, is how do you feel that the day, the three-day structure has changed the event? And obviously, for the better, it makes it a little less cramped. It gives people more chance to do I, other stuff. I like it. There's a lot less pressure. You don't yep. have to condense everything down. So uh, I think it's a great change. If I could have it be five days, I would. But yeah, of course. What are our other like massive takeaways, successes? The, the biggest takeaway that I have is just sort of a founding principle of Commander Shield is that like, Commander Shield is for people. Yep. You know, a, a, lot, a lot of people feel like this magic thing isn't for me. Commander Shield is for you. It's about community. The gathering has always been the most important part of magic for me. And I think Commander Sealed really embodies that for me. Absolutely. And I've been it's just seeing it over and over again, people echoing how community-based this event is. You know, the idea that people are just giving each other cards during the building process. My buddy was telling me somebody at his pool handed him a deflecting swat and a spell seeker. Like, here you go. You if you're gonna use them, then get after it. And that's so massive. I wanted to ask you how many people entered the main event 
Do you know off the top of your head? I, I want to say it's just a hair under 300. Wow. And we had like 256 last year, right? It was like the sol It was like a, a full round number, one of those like good draft numbers yeah, or a good yeah. tournament numbers. Four into four into four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this year we've got just under three, so it's a bigger event for sure. Has that represented any challenges? Logistically, no, not actually. It hasn't. <laughs> there you go. That's beautiful. That's, yeah. that's the perfect answer. That's exactly what we want to hear. Post-finals. I was out of the room taking a call from the wife, like you do. <laughs> miss, miss, miss the handshake moment. What happened? Uh, we uh, kept some hands, and uh, my teammate did not draw lands, unfortunately. No fault of my teammates, just, you know, that's magic. Yep. And uh, we did not play a game. We inflicted zero damage to our opponent's life uh, at any point. I heard and at one just... point they were above starting. Oh, the whole time. <laughs> uh, they, they gained two life on turn one from two ETB tap, gain one life lands. And uh, they went from 45 to 47. I believe they ended the game at 55. We never <laughs> no. took a point off them. Uh, yeah, just absolute slaughter. Oh, and, no. And that's why serious matches are played best two out of three in real world. But it's for charity. I don't. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. of course. Well, fun weekend. Congratulations on making finals. It sounds like it was a good match. I heard the laughter from outside the room. Y'all were chopping it up and having a good time regardless. Uh, we were mostly just roasting Eric for being insufferable. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, I'll have to go talk to him and see if that's the truth. But uh, thank you so much for an amazing weekend. Congratulations again. And we'll talk soon enough. Sure. So we're here with the other member. I didn't get the team interview from team uh was it it was team trevor project no team trans team lifeline, trans lifeline yeah. we got team trans lifeline here we're here with l l i uh, heard you had a little bit of a rough spot that game how are you feeling how are you feeling going into this event uh going into this event um the event in general yeah uh, i was just like I, I was ready to have some fun ready for uh you know just a good weekend of, of doing good work and playing good magic and like uh I think we succeeded in that because uh, I played some awesome games. Absolutely. And uh, my deck was filthy. But uh, yeah, bad bad beats in that one. Bad beats. I saw you playing yesterday. I think it was your game. It would have been game two, I think. Yeah. And I saw you sitting across, or sitting next to somebody who looked like they were like wheedling every single play. And I was watching you sit there next to him. And he was, it really looked like he was like kind of every single play, he was like second guessing and stuff like that. So it was really interesting to see. I mean, I wasn't there, I wasn't in the game, but it was interesting to see that that was one of the only instances of kind of people not trying to angle shoot, but really taking every every single instance of the gameplay uh, as something they could push. Were your games, for the most part, were they pretty chill, or were people being like gravity chamber about it? Were they being rule sticklers? How were people doing? No, my I think all three of uh, all three of the regular rounds I played were like everyone was pretty chill. Uh, I think in, in round two, uh, which was the one you were sitting yep. next to me for, I think, was uh, there was another player who was sitting there, Niall. Uh, okay. She's like a modern player, so like she has some tournament experience yep. and stuff. And like, so I think the two of us were kind of like on the level with like what we were doing with our play. Yep. I think the other two players are a little less experienced and were making kind of like plays based on what they uh, like, they could they could see, which maybe they just didn't have like the, the tournament experience. Yep. Right? So they made a few plays that uh, reflected that. I think I think that's probably the only weird stuff that happened. But for the most part, every game was was chill. Every game was cool. Uh, even the game I lost uh, yesterday uh, in in round three. Yep. Uh, I that was a hell of that was a feature match, and that was a hell of a match, right? Like you went. You guys went all the way through it. You guys were in the dungeon forever. Yeah, I. Uh, I got a really fast start in that game and was uh, kind of mopping up until we got to the festival, and then uh, I pretty much lost that game to the festival. But um, yeah, in this in this final match, you know, Brian asked me to be his partner, uh, but um, I mulled the first hand, uh, pulled out that second seven, and was like iffy on it. It had yep. two lands and uh, like four different card draw spells. So it was and Woo! yeah, and like two two things of it. We, I had like two removal spells. I was like. This seems okay, but I think I could probably mull it. I've gone to six in every other game I've played. Oh, wow. To, well, because like since my commander is four colors, I want to make sure I've got the fixing and yep. the, the acceleration. And who are you on again? Uh, Atraxa Grand Unifier. I, in every other game I played, I saw like, I must have seen half my deck in every game. Amazing. She's crazy. But uh, 
Yeah, Brian and I deliberated on it for a second. He was like, no, keep the hand, and then, like, just bad beats. You I just never hit that I third just, land, not until way... I heard I heard people clapping when you hit your third land drop. It was, like, that late in the game. Yeah, it was It was literally, like, turn six or seven. It's, it's one of the... One of the things we run into in EDH, but at the end of the day, it was for charity. You were in the finals. You got picked by an amazing player to play a two-headed giant game, and you're an amazing player yourself. Everybody was terrified of the pile you put together, so you've got a lot to wear on your chest, like really, really proudly on the way home. Congratulations on an amazing showing this weekend. Thank you so much. Uh, I, it was a great time. I'll definitely be here next year. Uh, I beat myself up a little bit right now, but I don't think there's anything I could have done differently. Everybody's going to be stoked about seeing your performance and seeing how you did. And, and please do me a favor. when that deck, Put that deck list up on Moxfield and share it with us, please, when you get the chance. Oh, absolutely. I'd, Brian was looking through it right before our game, and he was like, this is disgusting. That's what I heard. <laughs> I heard it's a real monster. Well, congratulations again, and thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Seth, I know you were excited about being able to judge that game. Oh, yeah. How was it judging a two-headed giant final commander game? Like, oh, you were, brings, why were you so excited about it going into it? It brings me back to the good old days, I don't know why I'm doing this accent, of the pro tour that was two-headed giant. Okay. Uh, I wasn't actually on that pro tour. Uh, I don't even think I was playing Magic uh, at that point. But there, there was a pro tour that was two-headed giant, as far as I know. So what... What's different about it? What's what's so exciting about judging a two-headed giant game? Well, so what I like about judging at the table is I got to see the the plays, right? I got to watch the whole game unfold. Um, but what I don't get is what's going on in the player's head. I watch a lot of magic on online, you know, on yep. YouTube when you're watching somebody stream. They're telling you, oh, I'm going to do this and this and this. Uh, Bosch and Roll, great example of somebody who walks you through all their plays. Yep. With two-headed giant, the communication between the players gives me a bit of a sense of what's going on in their head. So okay. Watch that. Um, and to it, a giant has a, a cool energy to it, which is fun to watch. There, you know, you 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 have your teammate by your side, so there's this this camaraderie that's really exciting to see. Excellent. Well, thank you for answering a couple of simple questions. I really like it. And the other question that I've been asking people, you've been to a lot of events, you judge a lot of events, you participate in a lot of events. How would you say this? compares to other events as far as oh, the wow. the gameplay the vibe the rules calls what what do you feel makes this event either stand out or or the the vibe all that so just a general I mean, feeling it absolutely st stands out it the the vibe is incredible I, I think that the gathering part of magic is really about these communities level events in addition to all the big stuff but keeping these things in mind is is really important and you feel that here there, there are people from all over coming to enjoy the this format that they that they love but they're supported by this local rochester scene so many yep. people i've seen hang, hanging out on stream being like oh yeah i recognize you from the lgs yep just local yeah and just this is the local store running it essentially in this amazing space and you know this is the fourth one it started just a couple years ago and Look at the size that it's become. Now, I don't know if you can talk about this, uh, how the judging works, anything like that. Were there any like really wacky judge calls you had to deal with? Were there anything like particularly noteworthy? Uh, not too much. We were at regular here, so I there's a little bit of freedom to to you know I followed the jar, but there's some freedom to to work in there. Um, the coolest question I had was actually for the two at a giant game. Okay. Uh, so, Chad, I'll ask you this. How, if, if me and Alan are both attacking our team or our opponent who has the initiative, which of us gets the initiative? Oh, wow. That is a good question. So if Chad can figure it out, uh, I mean, I did. And <laughs> we, we were able to... Probably kind of boring, yeah. <laughs> but, but it's a fun rules puzzle, fun delve into the comprehensive rules. Awesome. Well, that's yeah. a really good question. Thank you so much for a little bit of insight into what goes into the judging of these events. I always appreciate your candor and being able to chop it up a little bit. And uh, I'm sure I'll see you in a couple days. With or without the dinosaur. Awesome.